Lord Jesus, take the preeminence. Take charge in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'm going to lead us through 10 powerful prayer points. And in so doing, I want you to be alert. One of the things you need to understand is that uh, for some time now, I've been talking about a date with God, and this is part of the date with God. I'm trying to make it as practical as possible so that if I tell you that a believer does not need to engage directly with the devil in a battle where you spend hours binding this demon, then what do I say you should do? What I'm simply saying is that a believer needs to spend hours with God. And after he has spent those hours with God, he comes to deal with a situation. So you go to school to solve a problem. The athlete spends sometimes six to eight months running to run only nine seconds on a track. It is not the opposite. He spends years, sometimes months, just training to go on a nine to ten second race. Why? But sometimes we believers, we rather change it around. We spend that time on the track before the real race, then we eat. We enjoy ourselves. Then the day of the match, then we say, today they are fasting. <laughs> now you are going to lose the battle. Actually, the day of the battle, the day of the race, you must eat. The day of the race, you must be half strength to run. So, the Bible says in um, 2 Corinthians, I believe, chapter 2, 11, that lest Satan should take advantage of you because you are not ignorant of his devices. So, if Satan doesn't mind if you are ignorant because ignorance is not an excuse. Now, actually, this verse of ignorance has to do with you forgiving people. If you look at the verse before this, you see that what Paul was trying to drive at is talking about the ability to forgive others for the sake of Christ, else Satan will take advantage of you. So he has, he's trying to say that if you are a person who is not in the game of forgiving, your prayer is automatically redundant. Your seed, your offering, all that you are doing, Satan has taken advantage of you. So Paul was saying we should not be ignorant of his devices. Now one thing you need to understand about prayer therefore is that prayer is always an appointment. Prayer is always an appointment. And when you form a habit of appointment with God, God learns to meet you at that time. Now, if you've realized this, I have done this throughout the years. There are times that my appointment with God is from 12 midnight to morning. There are times that it is from 3 to 8. And any time I engage God in these appointments, for one reason or the other, I'll wake up. I don't know if you know that kind of thing. For one reason or the other, you wake up. Because your spirit man, your subconscious man agree, and other we will, will wake you. I'm not talking about alarm. You will wake up all of a sudden because you have an appointment. So if you read Acts chapter 3 from verse number 1, you will know that Peter and John went to the temple at the hour of prayer. And this is why during their fast we will do, I think I've taken time to give you the watches and I'm giving you from 3 to 6 that watch. During the fast, I'll trust God to give you the other days and the kind of engagements to engage in. But you read that Peter and John went to the temple at the hour of prayer. You see, spiritually, there are hours and there are seasons and there are times that the heavens open and there are times that they close. Just like the office, there are office hours that if you go, the embassy has closed. <laughs> no matter the document you hold, you have to come the following day or rebook an appointment. 
So is it that no, that doesn't mean then that you shouldn't pray every time. You can pray every time. But your body must book a kind of appointment with destiny. Telling yourself that every day around this time, I'm going to pray. Now, when you book that kind of every day around this time, you are going to pray. What happens is that your angels and the heavenly angels meet in agreement at that precise time for a conference concerning your destiny. But most of you, we just get there and we are like, oh, let me pray. Then tomorrow, so it's like your angel doesn't know the season that you, are, you, you, you should be praying. But when you make it consistent, God will make it a habit. Look at your Bible very well. In Genesis chapter 3, you realize that God came to visit Adam. It shows that they had a meeting time. But when God got there, Adam was not there. Adam has missed the prayer meeting. That meeting, Adam was not there. The fellowship time that God has with Adam, he wasn't there. That's why God said, where are you? Because we always meet at this time. We always engage at this time. So if we engage at this time, why is that this time you are not here? Is it because there's traffic? What is the reason why you are not here? And then Adam said, I've seen you, but I heard your voice and I was afraid. So you realize that Adam had an appointment with God. So as a believer, now sometimes we say, oh, all the watches are this time, this time, traces. But you as a human being, you should also find out about, apart from the watches, you must also find out that which hour tends to patterns. Habit tends to patterns. And when this habit tends to patterns, the day you don't do it, you feel like you have sinned. You feel like there's something wrong with you. It's like a woman who has missed her menses. <laughs> you feel that now something has changed in the body. When you open these eyes and you can't see, you know that there's something wrong. When you open these eyes, because this eye, you know, it normally sees. So you need to pick up an appointment with God. But much as you are picking up an appointment with God, I want us to look at, and I'll be giving you this kind of topics once in a while in a random because I believe that it changes life. The first thing we want to do with it, as a believer, one of the things you must pray for is what I call boldness to execute your assignment. Boldness to execute your assignment. You see, you can have a strong inclination, a strong desire to do something. If you look at the Bible very well in Acts chapter 3, you will note that in this same Acts chapter 3, you will know that when they, Peter, James, Peter and John raised this crippled man, they arrested them for doing good. Don't think that you people are only arrested for doing bad. In the spiritual realm, people are arrested for being good. The day you decided to buy a car or you bought a car, that's the day in the spiritual realm they are not happy about it. So, in the physical realm, is when you do bad that you are arrested. But in the spiritual realm, there are people whose duty it is is that you don't break a certain rank. So, the day Peter Dems raised a cripple in the temple that was evidence for 40 years that the man was there, they arrested them, accosted them, and sent them, and they, they began to ship them. And the Bible said, when they noticed the boldness of these people, and they were not learned. You realize that the physical thing they saw about them was not a miracle, was not a Jesus. They saw that, number one, they were bold, and number two, they were not learned. So if they were not learned, what kind of knowledge have they received? Number two. Now, when they shipped them, they told them, now, like, do not, do not mention the name Jesus again. Remember, the process you passed on to get a miracle, don't go through that channel again. I know very well that if I kneel down 2 a.m. and I pray, I break through. 
the prince of this world will make sure that you don't kneel down to him. And whatever he will do to frustrate that appointment, he will do it. So when Peter dems, let's go to Acts chapter 4. And now we are going to pray from verse 29 to 31. So when they release them, Peter dems went to, Peter and John went to their home. Acts 4. And this is the prayer they prayed. And now, behold their threatenings. What is a threat? You, you are a threat to the satanic kingdom. Your mentality, even God, when he saw that these people were about to build the tower of Babel, in their head, in their brain, they had planned to execute it. God became threatened and came down to give them languages to stop them. So the day you made up your mind to make it in life, you became a threat to a demonic pattern, to a society pattern, to a world pattern that you are not supposed to. So what they do is that they threaten you. They threaten you with certain things that you will never make it. You are wasting your time. Drink other sauce, pass here, do this. This thing will never be. And all this is a waste and means of making you weak in faith. So the Bible said they went and they prayed. Why would they pray that behold they are threatened? It means that even though in front of the soldiers and the Pharisees, they were looking strong, saying, which name should we mention? We keep mentioning the name Jesus. When they left, they realized that it was just mouth, mouth for talk. You see, you can say, by the grace of God, how are you? I'm feeling okay. But you know very well that you are not okay. Is everything okay? Yes. Is that are the children good? Yes. Is marriage okay? Yes. Now, but you know very well that something is a threat to your life. Many people don't take time to pray on what threatens them. They just feel like I just clear it in the name of Jesus. It won't happen. No. So they prayed and said, "Listen." And listen, they didn't pray to any demon. They didn't bind any devil. Look at the prayer very well. Let's read together as Quarry says, one, two, treble, auto, tenor, bass, go. And now, Lord, who are they referring to? Lord, behold their word and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may what? Speak thy word. Number 30. By stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child, Jesus. And verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak the word of God with boldness. Now listen, let me tell you this. Until this time, you should know that when the Holy Ghost came on you, everybody has Holy Ghost. But it's not everybody that is full of the Holy Ghost. Some people's tank is almost empty. The, the river is drying. So, you know what? Doubt, unbelief, threats has a way of soaking up your faith in God. Is it true or is it not true? Look, you can see your friends in their car, your mates succeeding, and you look at your life and say, hey, what about me? And they'll tell you that, listen, you are a fool. And you are going, you know that what they are saying is you look like a fool. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know very well that I, I am better than this person. I'm good than this person. So you look at yourself and say, before you realize, what be me So you come to church, we preach like this, you get encouraged. But you never took time to go to God and say, God, this thing is a threat to me. This thing is a threat to me. The medical report is a threat to me. So God, I need you to grant me boldness. By stretching for your hand. In other words, any miracle you've used me to do before, I want to do a greater miracle. Whatever I've been used to do before, I want to do more. Whatever people are saying or doing is not going to stop me. And if you look at the place, people say, and when the place, the place was shaking. The place was what? It means that they didn't pray a rich risk contemporary prayer. But if it is today, I know what we will do. Will some people say, every witch, every witch, every agent of darkness, every agent of darkness, 
human agents, human agents, I stand against says, die by fire, die by fire, then we start praying. But if you look at this critically, they went to God and said, what we are lacking is more boldness. What we are lacking is that we need to do more miracles. Is it true or is it not true? Say, Lord Jesus, anything that the enemy is using to threaten my faith, my confidence, I pray for boldness. I pray for boldness. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your hand so that anytime I mention the name Jesus, signs, wonders, miracles are done. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit take over my life completely. Now begin to speak in tongues on it. This is how you pray. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. As you are praying, once in a while your brain will go to things that threaten you. Then you tell God, this area is a threat to me. This area doesn't make me comfortable. I'm not okay with this area. Help me there. You are speaking in tongues on it. You are talking to God. I want to hear you. You know your being single is a threat to you. You are not finding any devil. You say, Lord, behold, my being single is threatening my service to you. My not having a baby is being a threat to you. My having only one child is a threat. What people are saying about me, Lord, is getting into me. People's perception about me that I've been serving you, but there's nothing happening, Lord. It is true that I'm always in church. It is true that I'm always praying, but this thing is not making me happy. Sometimes, even when they call that I should come forward and give an offering, I'm not too comfortable because I don't have it. It's a threat to my life. Lord, mercy. Keep praying. It is you, Lord. We glorify your name till my life, till all mercy that it is you, Lord. Glorify your name. All I want, all I want, all I want is for you. Lord be glorified. There is something that threatens your faith. You are not buying any of the Lord, look at it. You know, Lord, I've not been able to serve you because of this area. It's a threat to my life. My foolishness is a threat to my service to you. My weakness is a threat to you. This is threatening me. I want to be able to stand and speak your word boldly, but my past keeps hunting me. This, my past, is a threat to my service to you. I need some boldness. People's perception about me is a threat to me. I'm lift your voice and pray. Everybody, you know what is threatening to you. You're not being in school, it's a threat to you. You can be doing all kinds of things, but whenever you remember that you are not going to school, then your heart misses a bit. Once in a while, even when you are praying, this thing comes into your mind and you are like, God, why me? It's a threat. <laughs> Rama baka ben terenda brada, ziye ne brada berana zane marana. Jine bovari kerenda masare marima. You are speaking in tongues in that area. Ye de 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 ke te ke te 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 Yes, they want me not to mention Jesus again. 
And I told them I will. <laughs> My Lord, I will tell you the truth. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. This thing. I'm afraid that tomorrow morning I can't look at them and tell them that is the Lord. Behold their threatenings. Lord, behold this thing is threatening me. Poverty is threatening me. Sickness. Joblessness is becoming a threat to my life. It's not because you have done something bad. Oh. You raised the grave for Peter. It's because you are serving God. That is why some things are happening to you. If it is not the fact that you should have served God, by now you could have gotten married to it. Some useless person be somewhere and enjoy your life. But because you want to walk in God's will, because you want to walk in God's will, so certain things are not going the way you want it. This is just the first prayer. Lift your voice and pray. We have nine more prayers to go. I wish we can do only this for one hour. Only this. Only this. Praying in tongues on what is threatening us. This kind of prayer you pray in tongues boldly, where your whole system shakes. What is threatening me? Lord, I tried serving you once, and what somebody told me embarrassed me. What somebody said about me, so I have not been bold from that day forward. That thing has threatened my very existence. Don't sleep. Satan will keep doing these things to you. He knows that that thing is threatening you, but oh. What fun is there? What coming out? They be a devil. It is God who holds your life in His hands. He determines your times and your seasons. It is He that makes a way where there is no way. If He decides, no one can stop. <laughs> Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one but live. Who can stand against the King? No one can. No one live. belongs to him then he must intervene on your behalf Jesus met a man who was blind the man prayed for his attention when Jesus got to the man Jesus asked the man what would you have me do for you the guy said that I may receive my sight Jesus knew he was blind but he spoke to Jesus you, you are speaking to Jesus the Lord, this thing is threatening me on. it's because I'm a believer if I was an unbeliever this thing does not threaten unbelievers what is threatening you is not a threat to an unbeliever it is a threat to you because you have decided to serve God because you have decided to serve God 
like you know what to do. As you are praying, let your spirit bring you illumination and understanding. As you are speaking in tongues, ideas will come into you. Mindset, okay. the Lord will speak. The devil also try to speak. Anybody that has cursed you, that curse is a threat. What the people told Peter and John made them afraid. Impotent spiritually. They were just doing a throne in front of society. They were just pretending they were bold. In Jesus' name. This is just an introduction. You go home, you continue with it. You see that as you are praying, things will be coming in your head. Some of them, when you meet some are mental problems, some are psychological, some are very spiritual. Some of them you finish, you deal with it in the name of Jesus. Some of them you you take that initiative that God is telling you to take. Now the next prayer topic is breaking the iron gates. Acts chapter 12, you see that Peter, the head of the early church, was arrested. Why was he arrested by Herod? You see, when the priest could not destroy Peter, they and they saw that Peter themselves overcome them by the they've overcome the spirit of religion, human point. They sent Peter's case in the spiritual realm to governmental bodies. So at this level, Peter is no more dealing with the church, church members who are dealing with AMA. High Court, Supreme Court, you are dealing with certain high powers. And when you are dealing with high powers, you can't fight high powers. Because the Bible says in Romans 13, the ethnic authority is of God. Now, what if the person who doesn't want you to succeed is an authority figure over you? What if the person is your pastor, your former pastor, a, f- a father or a mother? an authority figure over you. When they arrested Peter, the Bible said they had killed James. But the Bible said that when they arrested Peter, the good news for Peter was that they couldn't kill Peter because the season for that has not come. So they were waiting for the opportune time so that they would kill Peter. But in between the opportune time and the problem and Peter was, verse 5 said, and the church made prayer. They prayed church prayed. Now, most often when the devil foresees how great you are, he can arrest you. Arrest somebody who can help you. Arrest somebody who can lead you to a a major breakthrough. The one who should open the contract door for you. As soon as the person told you, I'm going to help you, the person was arrested spiritually. As soon as, okay, let me use myself. As soon as every year they got five years visa, coronavirus came. <laughs> so, where are you going to? <laughs> anyway, I don't want to go anywhere, but I'm just being myself as an example. You see that? <laughs> so, I can't go anywhere. Corona, borders are closed. This is an authority. You can't do anything about it. Where are you going? And they. Their prayer was therefore made by the church for Peter. Now, verse, let's read verse 6. Good. But my main key is in verse 10. 
And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Now I always say that this Peter, if I arrested this guy, leave him alone. Eh? They put two soldiers in case of this, two demons, two principalities, whose duty is to monitor you in prison. You are in a demonic prison where you realize that your life is at a standstill. Your vision is at a standstill because the devil doesn't have time to kill you yet. You are still alive. How many of you are alive still? There is hope for you. But you know that you are in a kind of a cage, a prison. Now, this prison, they should leave you alone to have your freedom. They have also put monitors around you. It's like when those days, Kotoko and House were playing football and they put Dan Coleman to monitor, what's his name? This guy, and anywhere, when even the player was going to drink water, the player was by him. The coach was talking to the player was by him. He has been made to monitor. When they are going to play football, they look for those who are very good, like Messi and Ronaldo. And they give some specific players. Your, 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 your game plan today is to stop this person. Forget any other player. This is the player you must stop. Make sure this player doesn't move. And in the name of Jesus, anybody who has been placed around you, something must happen for you to escape. They are the ones that give a report, a daily report about you to your masters. They are around you. So, these two soldiers bound with two chains. Now, the next thing is that, look, you are, this Peter is in prison. He has two soldiers around him. Amen? Oh, is it? That is what in the Bible. And he was also bound with what? Two chains. Hand and feet. Wait a minute. Oh. I thought prison is enough. I thought prison is enough. What kind of sentence is this? The sentence because they know that their master Jesus, they put him in a tomb and he escaped. So they knew very well that like father, like son, if they don't take extra precautionary measures on this one, they will have another testimony. But I want to tell you that any demon that doesn't want you to have a testimony, we are going to pray you out of that cage. Your amen is not good at all. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. Aside these two and the chains, there were some people who were making sure that the door to the prison, not ghetto, door. So you can see that there were three entrances to for Peter. It's like outer court, inner court, holy so holy. But this one is... So sometimes you see that people, we are burning demon. You burn one demon, the following day you meet another demon because that demon thing you are burning will slow down your pace. But the church pray. Look at verse 7. Which prayer did they pray? We will see it. And behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he swore Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly and his chains fell off from him. One level of deliverance. Chains fell off. Now, the fact that your chains are falling, that's when you are free. You are not free yet. Let's go on. Eight. And the angel said unto him, Get thyself and bind on thy Get thyself and bind on thy and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about him. In other words, then the angel told him what he himself needs to do. In prison, you can be acting like a madman, a lunatic. You can be undressed. But where I'm taking you, you must dress up. After the deliverance of the chains falling, the angel, that is why I'm talking to you that sometimes when you are in prayer, the Lord will visit you and tell you how to dress up for tomorrow. But if you are busy binding demons, who demon will tell you to dress up? They spoke to God. And when they spoke to God, an angel was released. Who came? Chains fell off and then the angel said, put on your sandals. Stability. Tintimie. Put on your dress. Get back your covering on. And he said, and follow me. Sometimes in prayer, as you are in praying, the Lord will tell you who to follow. You tell you, 
go on YouTube and watch this man of God. Go and get your man of God's message, A, B, C, and D, and listen. Who are you to follow? The next one, nine. And he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. You see, some of this, when God is doing for you, if you're not careful, you think it's a vision. Sometimes you'll be there and the Lord will tell you, go for this book and read. Instead of you going for the book and read, you are watching a Jacob and Mentus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You finish watching uh, Karishika. Lucifer, Lucifer, Queen. You watch this movie. Ah, by the time your angel is ready to take you out of the gate, you realize that you are not following. You realize that the, the mentality you needed for the next level, you don't have it. Because at the place you were supposed to put in a certain knowledge, you were putting in on fire. I felt like if you are there and you feel in your spirit something which is good something even God can tell you something to do and in your mind that is even bad but when you feel strongly then read a book follow a genuine man of God you, what is wrong with that thing for you to say I want am I teaching something here so in a minute at this time Prayer was still going on. Peter doesn't know. Someone is praying for Peter. But he is just there and he, and he said, get up. Get up. Do this. He got up. The chains fell off. He got up. He, something tells them, put on your sandals. He puts on his sandals. Somebody tells him, put on your dress. He put on his dress. And then verse 10. This is where the key starts from. When they were past the first and the second word, it means that there was a first security, second security. Listen. You can be as if you say time can make you feel like we are free, but you are still in the same cage. What, what do I mean? You can have a passport. Can we be at Kotoka? Can we be in the plane? The plane will not spark. The whole family stayed Baba to you at the airport. And they know that by now they are with you. Or is it true? It's not true. But the plane has not sparked. All the engines are not working. As soon as the pilot said, all phones on flight mode, you put off your phone. And the plane will not spark. All your family know that you are gone. But you, dear, you know, are still in Ghana. Because we try migration. <laughs> Immigration. You have even sat in the plane. So everybody thinks, um, as you are, oh, it has happened to us before. We're going to, you did Dubai. We were in the plane, the plane will not spark. There's an engine spot. Hey, Koyali. <laughs> they said, we are sorry to inform you that there's going to be a delay in the flight because A, B, C, D, D, D. Hey, my people have come here again. That's when everybody was gone. Everybody thinks, oh, you are gone. You are, you are, still, you are still there. First word. Second word. Should I give out the prayer point today? I should limit it. First word. Second word. The devil doesn't mind you making 500 Ghana cities a month. How much I will they survive it? You need about $50,000. And you are making 500 and you think you have arrived. First word, 50. He knows the one that will bring the breakthrough. You will never go there. And here you are. Every gate, every gate. That enemy has got that enemy. Go, open, open, open. In the name of Jesus. I said, you are a joker. First word. Second word. Then they came onto the iron gate that led to the city. That is the gate that must open. Master, Master, listen. The one that will bring you exposure. There is an opportunity that when the gates open, that one brings you exposure. Hey. Let me give an example. You, let's say you sell meat pie in church. If somebody is the meat pie, what will happen? But if you are there and the president of Ghana takes the meat pie, say, Kai, the next Independence Day, you, 
you must supply the nation. Now when you know, say, ah, man, I have arrived. You see, so you can really understand that he, the devil didn't mind through going you through the door, first door, second door, until you meet the iron gate. The iron gate. And the Bible said, the gate opened unto them of his own accord. And they went and passed on through the street and fought with the angel departed from him. Which prayers releases angel? This is where you look at your life where you are. You look at your life where you want to be. And you close this your crow crow eyes and begin to blast in dangerous tongues. And unto this your eye can see yourself making it. You don't stop praying. Oh God, oh God, Abahin, Abahin, I lose. Oh God, I know you have done it in Jesus' name. As always, Psalm 91 has worked for me. Psalm 27 has worked for me. I give you praise. Maybe Psalm 91 and 21 just broke the chain. So you close your eyes until you see a vision that you have done, you have executed that deal until you have a vision that has changed. When Elijah, give me give an example. When Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain, first Kings 19, he didn't go searching. It was his servant was searching and coming to tell him. He kept on their prayer. And the servant would come and say, he kept waving, no rain. As soon as the servant said, now I see, the hand see the speed in which Elijah entered the city why? because he prayed for me, and let me tell you this oh, some we pray as if the devil is so powerful, and it is he that has kept that in the gate, Herod doesn't have power no body has power I mean I've seen it before physically before, I don't want to give you this, we are going to pray right now that any cage you are in that makes you comfortable. You are even sleeping in the cage. Peter was sleeping. This prayer topic like this should be two hours. Your life is bizarre. You don't like prayer. You don't like prayer. You prefer to watch a movie than prayer. Who says medicine is taken because it is sweet. They said, they asked the mice or the mouse, why are you chewing the pepper? Is it sweet? He said, no, it's not the sweetness. I brought here. It's just wickedness. We just want to destroy the person's business. See, yeah, we, as she and pass, yeah, we, we are chewing the pepper. And the pepper is burning our mouth. But we just want to destroy the person's business. So the joy of destroying the business is the reason why we are chewing the pepper. Satan can be bent on destroying you. But listen, this is post prayer. You can really see that they didn't have time to deal with any Herod. They didn't have time to go and consult anybody. Before Herod woke up in the morning, the prisoners, everybody woke up. Peter was out of the prison. Out totally. And let me tell you this, we are going to pray until you come out. Say, I'm going, I'm coming out. So this is why he said, oh Lord, any cage I am in. Let me tell you this. Let me give you a practical example. You can marry. Marriage is first door. Children is second door. But you must marry, have children, and have money to take care of yourself and the children. This one day, you have entered the city. I hope you are understanding me. You have entered the city. And until you enter the city, the Bible actually, if you read the Bible, could tell you that they didn't stop praying. No, Peter there was free, walking free. He went to knock at the door of the people who were doing their prayer. And at the knock, they sent a maid, Rhoda, go and check. They did nobody stop him praying. And the lady came and said, Somebody is standing there. He looks like Peter's angel. Because at that level, Peter himself looks like an angel. He 
doesn't look human. It is God made Peter's spirit be. Because you can't pass through a wall until you have become a spirit being. Then they came and told him that it's Peter's angel. He said, no, let's go and have it. When they went, it was Peter. That was when they ended the prayer. What do we do? We bomb by 20 minutes. I mean, well, yeah, but that was one year so I'm paying me via far. Are you crazy? I'm not talking to somebody here at all. You got a visa, you go to abroad. That's not the reason. You went abroad to do what? To bring businesses down. That is that your gate. Until you have done what you have to do, you are still in prison. <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody here at all. So you must be able to tell yourself that. We want Peter to be with us in this room. And guess what? When Peter woke, was sent, the first place Peter went was where the prayer meeting was being held. Why? Because that was the source of his deliverance. Peter didn't go home. Peter didn't visit anybody. He was directed straight to where the prayer was. And some of us, the people that God has sent to deliver us, they are in prison and they are comfortable. All of you here, by now, you should be giving me $1 million every month in my account. But look at your life. You are, not, you are okay with two cities, 50 investments. You are very happy. <laughs> Man of God, praise the Lord. I just bought a motorbike. I'm not saying don't be thankful. Man of God, thank you. I just bought a shoe. Best in my year. When you pull up, buying private jet for their pastor. Five people will come together and buy private jet and they will say, pastor, we thank you that you have received it. If you don't receive it, we are in trouble or we beg you. Oh, you think I'm lying? Should I give you the name? Pastor Chris Church, the musicians, the musicians in the church, they came to get and bought their pastor private jet. They don't like him working. It's not the whole church, they're musicians. So like Kaya, A, B, Ben, those, and those who need songs, they can't say, we don't want you, buy you private jet. That's why we say, this is the doing of the Lord, it's marvelous in our sight. Oh, mommy, to see this crowd, oh, oh, what are you not praying? Man, we don't know, life is hard, life is what hard. So in the name of Jesus, what I want to see, in the Lord, I must see it. Any level that the enemy has engaged me, I pray, empowering my angel to be empowered as I speak in tongues. Let my angel be fueled to get into my cage and bring me out. I am entering into the city. I can never be in and around this bondage. Now lift your mouth and begin to pray. You are not binding any demon. You are speaking in tongues. See, you can't pray. You enjoy your level. When you can't pray such a prayer, you are comfortable with your status quo. That was Peter. He took somebody else to pray Peter out. He was sleeping in prison. James is even gone. I must also go as well. No. No. Somebody got to pray. Maybe they have put you in prison. Now listen to me. Romans 8, 11 is your point of view. I forgot that when you are praying that prayer. He said, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you, 
that same spirit will come and quicken your mortal body. There's a prayer they prayed that made Peter's body become so quickened that Peter could not stay in that prison. They kept Jesus in 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 in, 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 in how do you call it in the in the in the grave, right? Put a big stone there. Put sixteen soldiers by it, and before the, the man was out, and Paul was describing, he said, that was a spirit that came to raise Jesus from that grave. That was a spirit. And if that same spirit is the Holy Ghost you have, when you are praying like that, you are praying the Holy Spirit. I don't care the case you have put me, they could have put my mother, my father, and my neighbors in it. They could have gone for change, but of fear could not me. That same spirit must quicken me. I can't stay in this prison. Lift your voice and begin to pray again. This is a two-hour prayer. You lock your door. Kibeko basana, zigi digi tebe tiki tebe, zabaka tebe tebe. In my family, people start; they don't finish. They can start dating; they will marry. They can start building; they will not finish. They can start; there is no finishing power. No. There is a Holy Spirit that brings you out and make, gives you a finishing power. Zachariah chapter 4. He says, listen. Who? The hands of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation and he will finish it. Because it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. It takes the Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit. Not by might. You can't do it. Not by power. But by my Spirit. So your hands have laid foundation. You are not like them. Oh, you, you kill James so they will do it to me. It happened to my brother. It happened to my sister. It is a normal thing. No, not for you. No, this is not it. The hand of Zababa have laid the foundation and he will finish it. Yeah. The hand of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation. That is why you know that I'm finishing that school. I'm finishing that house. I'm finishing that project. I will execute it. I'm not stopping at the first gate, the second gate. I'm getting into the city. By my strength, it won't work. Lord, I need, I need your help. By my strength, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Don't let people tell you that, oh, it's normal for us. It happens every day. <laughs> no, no, no. They would have said, Peter, allow it. It's Passover. Your master Jesus, Passover time, they killed him. So you allow it. You to, When they kill you at Passover, it's normal. It happened to your boss. It can happen to you. No. The church said, no, it can't happen at this Passover. This Easter, no, 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 no. They took Jesus because nobody prayed. But we are not allowing Peter we are not allowing Peter. There is somebody God has earmarked. Sometimes the enemy targets the people who are financial pillars in your life. People who mean well for you. This is not a two minutes prayer. I came to take it, 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 take it. Zuri bigidi 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 bigidi
Zika tapakata bunta biata. Zura bamba rekere nderende. The person, if you when the person doesn't have, he will give to you, right? That should let you know that if this person became a millionaire, the person can transform your life. But there's a principality that I decided to give Peter in that prison. Let that same spirit, let that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead enter our bodies, enter the bodies of people in the church and begin to resurrect us, begin to pick us up, begin to activate us, begin to possess us so that gates will be broken. We will pass through the walls, we will pass through the door, we will pass through iron gates, metallic gates. Ten prayer points that can change your life is what we are doing now. Stir me up, 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 who wake me up, who wake me up, stir me up, stir me up, Holy Ghost, who wake me up, stir me up, stir me up, stir me up, stir me up, Zenda Makare Mesulere Mazipere, Zimi no Mondem Ramana Madigan, the Ramperta Mazin, Zibere Babata, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Iumbro bakara bam pra basa bandare de rosite. Iembera ra ra da da mazende blinte. Iman iba iba rika randa bisete. Iumblo ma prene muse prene mukare de nara da. Zama wake me up, stir me up, wake me up, stir me up, wake me up, stir me up, stir me up, wake me up. Let that same spirit that did not allow Jesus to remain in the grave stir you up. Paul said, if that same spirit eh, is what you contain, it will bring you out. It will bring you out. It will bring you out. Zara Maria This is not binding demons. Home. Leave Herod alone. By chapter 13, Herod will die. But you must come out of there. David said, let my enemies live long so that they will see what I'll be in future. Some of the people who are putting you in bondage, in chain, they will live to see you succeeding. They will see you making it. Then it will be a great testimony. Ah, Kareba. You reign. Ocean Zion's King Kadosh Kadosh You are mighty on your throne You break forth You spirit of the deep If you are doing anything and it's within the walls you won't succeed. No, you won't succeed. You must break the wall. This is a church without walls. The walls of Jericho must come out. If you are selling a product and it is within a wall, nobody will buy it. Your gifts, you are playing keyboard, you are playing drums. It is within a wall. No, you must break the barrier. You must break the walls. First gate is not enough. Second gate is not enough. The iron gate must break. 
And as she become empowered, your angels are empowered. Your level of empowerment will determine the empowerment of your angel. If you are weak, your angel is weak. If you are tired, your angel is tired. If you are frustrated, your angel is frustrated. Your angel is your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. The next prayer point, are you learning? After you can go for the message and pray. It's Matthew 25. I call it the spirit of delay. The enemy doesn't mind you getting all the gifts and the talents. But he knows that by the day your opportunities have come, he knows what to do to you. So that when your opportunities come, you will not have the ability to do it. The Bible says, as soon as Zion traveled, they brought forth their children. If you are pregnant, and it is time to push, and you will not push, because you don't have strength, you and baby will die. So in Matthew 25, the Bible talks about virgins, five wise, five foolish. We all know the story, right? They waited. The problem with them was the waiting period. The waiting period. They all waited. But when they waited, by the time their opportunity came, the Bible said they all got up. All of them, they slept. They all backslided. All the ten backslided. Number two, all the ten, their oil got finished. Number three, five had extra oil. The other five did not have. So as soon as they had opportunity has come, they just trimmed their lamp and they were going. And they went to ask the other people, can you give me some of the oil? They said no. So they went. The time you were to pray, you were sleeping. Now you see the opportunity. Now that we jab sorry. Somebody should pray for you. The person is praying for himself. So they went to town, bought oil, and came back. Now they have the oil. But when they got there, they were told the door is closed. Season has changed. Next year. You have the oil, but you got it late. You have it. So what Satan does sometimes is that he pierces our containers and you are leaking. You are leaking oil. You are leaking oil. Sin leaks oil. Pride leaks oil. There are so many things that leaks oil. So by the time you are ready to say, oh, it is my season. I want to jump and grab you. Realize that your support base is not there. So if you read the Bible, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and died. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. See, the devil, instead of you preparing for your season, you are sleeping in your season. So that when your season comes, you are not preparing. Who in Issues and now order you sleep? I've given you a prayer, people are testifying today. I even had a testimony from abroad about a 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. prayer. You, you've never even tried it, and the first time you tried, you slept. You won't even get water and put your legs in and say, This thing, Miss Mayabi. You wait down when it is about 24 hours to your miracle. Say, God, this one be a kappa. The oil you are pouring in you can't take you on. You are late. 
So the Bible said, verse 11, please, let's go. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Yaba. Yabu, Shiraye. We are also here, Lord. We are all church members. We all fasted. We all prayed. We all lived holy. We all served you. We are all under righteousness. We all heard the word. What did he say? Twelve. But he answered and said, Very, very, I say unto you, I know you not. You are not qualified. You can't have access. You don't have access. They, what was their problem? They got the oil late. They got their hot. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. The day God wants to introduce you to your husband to be, that's the day your bese comes. The day you have to get into a business deal, that is the day you don't go to work. I think I'm not teaching here. Or oh, is it true? It's not true. The time you needed to do something. But I said, that's the day you didn't do it. So the opportunity passed you by and they came to tell you, oh, do you know that? So, ah, how come I didn't get it? Lord, please. Jacob didn't know this. Esau was told face to face, bring me food that I will bless you. He goes and loiter around. This one day my father will not like. This one my father will not like. Jacob's mother prepares goat meat in the house. Spice it with leaves to make it taste like bush goat meat. The man eats and blesses Jacob. Esau comes back, you are late. It's for you. But you are late. We are going to pray against the spirit of lateness. You are going to pray what? How do you pray on this spirit of lateness? It's about having oil in you every day. Having what? Having the capacity every day. And this one is not a devil, oh, please. Again, it's not a devil. It's not a devil who said the door is shut. It's Jesus. Is the Lord who said the Lord the door is shut? So who are you going to bind? I bind everyone who has closed the door. Who closed this door? We need people to take them to school. May they may they may go to school, may go to school, may they go to school. People go to the school after three years. You realize that this course you should have done it. Because this was what you needed to give you an opportunity. Now you say you want to do the course. By the time you finish, who will employ you? Because that, that time you're supposed to have done the course has passed. Now we are taking those who have graduated. What did you do in the last three years? Do you know what? Do you know what the Jimna? Oh, let them tell you. Busy watching Nollywood movies, Bollywood movies, Hollywood movies. Am I talking to somebody here at all? Sometimes you'll be there and the Lord will put it into your spirit. Study this course. And you're ready that this thing that the Lord is telling you, nobody knows it. Nobody has done it before. Because in the next five years, that will be the trending event. And that by the time, that's what made Bill Gates rich. By the time that door opens, but the only one who is there, everybody comes to teach me. But what happened? You were late. You were what? I didn't hear you. Are what? I didn't hear you. What made them late? Now, for you to overcome this, you need to have this. Give me Second Chronicles. 
chapter 12 verse 32 in the New King James Version. You need to be praying that God let me have understanding of my times and my seasons. So that I will know what to do. Second Chronicles chapter 12. Verse 32. Mm. Knowing what to do, when to do it, will not let you miss your season. I repeat by telling you what I said in the beginning. The athletes spend three years, not at least six months, to run for nine seconds. All the exercise they were doing was to go on the track, 100 meters, and run nine seconds. Not that there is a tournament tomorrow and you are yobbing. By the grace of God, the Lord has spoken to me, I will be first. So in the morning, that track and field is in the afternoon too. In the morning, you go jogging. By the time you get on the field, on your mask, get said, muscle pool. opportunity was yours, but it is closed. Because actually, if you are an athlete, the day of your event, you don't run, you don't jog, you sleep. You don't exercise, you sleep. And you meditate on how you run mentally. Hey, you are seeing Second Chronicles, why didn't you hear me? 32. There's no 32 there. First Chronicles 12, 32, sorry. But I said it, the men of Issachar, the sons of Issachar, this is to tell you that it wasn't, hear me, it wasn't Issachar. It wasn't Issachar who was, had a son. it was his children. Issachar is a son of Let me, of the sons of what? He's a generational spirit. He's the sons had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do they just knew what should be done talking to somebody here at all so we are going to pray right now the Lord I don't want to miss my season and my time I was talking to somebody in the US today I said listen I feel I am five months behind time. Yeah. What? Why? Because there are certain people I should raise by now who should be in a certain level. Five months behind time. Are you ready for this? So this is the time when you are praying, Holy Spirit, what has made my life slow? Begin to speak in tongues. Holy Spirit, what has made my life strong. Why am I behind? Why are my mates ahead of me? Somebody calls me from US. They want to interview me on radio. They bring me the posters. They've interviewed this man. They've interviewed this man. They brought all the posters of the big man. I said, I'm not interested. He said, why? I said, I don't feel like being in the media. Because I've realized something that when people promote you, they'll bring you down. I want to stay back. I said, if you like it, I said, if you like it, I'll give you Pastor David for the interview. He said, it is you we want. I said, no, you want somebody else. You just don't want anybody. It's me. You are not getting me. The truth is that sometimes you know when to withdraw, when to get in. I'm not talking to somebody at all. Jesus delayed Lazarus' funeral, going to Lazarus' grave, because he knows that if he gets into the city, at least it must be four days to afford a scripture. So he must be late. The goat or the sheep must be presented in the altar for at least three, four days before it will be sacrificed. If it goes before that time, it is illegal for him to be in Jerusalem. So he will not fulfill all righteousness. So it doesn't matter if Lazarus, my best friend, you will die. I don't care. I must fulfill my assignment. I don't satisfy human curiosity. I satisfy Jehovah God's curiosity. 
No man is telling me what to do. It is God who is uttering my steps. Knowing what you have to do. Herod said, I know I can kill you. I said, listen, a man can do nothing except it's given to you from above. If power has not been given to you, you can't do what you are doing. Jesus knew when to go for baptism and what to do at the baptism for the Holy Ghost to come upon him. He went. He was the only one who was being baptized and was praying. Everybody was just going to baptize without praying. What do you have to do? So you start speaking in tongues. Why is this thing in my life slow? He began to speak to you. This is the why. Study this. Study that. Study this. Study that. One day I was asleep. I had a tap. And I had to study the book of Ezekiel. This is years ago. I said, ah. So I began to study the book of Ezekiel. I studied it for months. And it's like, I don't want to read any book. I studied Ezekiel for months. Then one day, I saw myself flying. That was the time in Ghana, if you fly, they say you are a witch, you are a wizard. It's only witches that fly. So I realized that I was flying, going to people's houses, people's rooms. That's how I developed that gift. Knowing what they were discussing about me, I kept it to myself to one day I was flying in the air. And I met Prophet Ano, ICGC, in the air. Then we waved at each other. I was going somewhere. He was going somewhere. And I said, ah. So it's not me who flies. So the following week, I book an appointment. Then his office was at Denta. I don't know whether he's still there. There's this. So I went there. I sat down. This man will not come. He got to my tent. The man came and said, ah. I know why you are here. Because we met last week. You are a man of God. He said, I'm going somewhere. So he went. I said, ah, oh God. You see, when God wants to take you to a next level, there are certain knowledge he will give you. Your, if I had not been reading the book of Ezekiel, I would not be flying the spirit. So I said, let me try. I'm going to read Ezekiel. It's for you. I read Ezekiel. It's not like today that I'm doing, I, the current I'm doing Isaiah. I, Isaiah is on um, autoplay on, not the full diaries. I'm listening and listening and listening. But those days you have to read Ezekiel. Ezekiel. You, if God even tells you to read lamentation, you say, why God do want me to cry? You will read. Because whenever God tells you to do something, it is because he knows that there's something ahead. He's not speaking. It's the only devil that speaks to you about your past. God speaks to you about your future. And so anything that God is telling you to do, it is not for your now. It's for your tomorrow. If I want to know people, I was telling Mr. Barbara today that take your seat. That this, 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 John, I saw so many people and why they are not succeeding. I saw it cafe because I visited people's homes. Some people, I sat in a car with them. How is that possible? Years ago, 97, 1998, I read Ezekiel. And I didn't know why. Until later, I got to know that Ezekiel said, I was among the captives by the river Jeba. And the Spirit of the Lord carried me. The Spirit of the Lord carried me to the river, um, the, the valley of dry bones. The Spirit of the Lord carried me. I said, ah, now, when I was being carried, it was easy for me to understand. Because I now know why Ezekiel said I was carried. Sometimes God will tell you this YouTube message. My own message for um, listen, 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock I've listened more than 20 times My own message My own message My own message Someone was telling me that Man of God, my marriage I said go there Go to 3 to 5 That is the key It's like it's becoming the key for everybody Who is uh, give me that I'm in trust I go there and they come and tell me, I saw this vision. 
I saw this vision. The Lord is speaking to me. The Lord is speaking by you. So, open viewers, I won't come. Man of God, you know, data is expensive. Can I mean, you have to buy data and download? Pastor, transport is more expensive than data. Transport and poverty and trouble is more expensive than data. How many prayer points have I given you so far? May we have met to us for next time. How many? Three, only three. So this one is the third. Oh, you want all that? Hey. So say, Holy Spirit, I need understanding of the time. Prepare me for tomorrow. Any place that I am leaking so that I will not be able to assess my opportunities. Grant me grace and mercy. Now lift up your mouth and begin to pray. You need understanding. I'm sure the other people were wise. Instead of buying extra oil, the fall like it's too heavy. Oh, you don't mind, Jimmy. There be another mukra gallon, gallon, gallon. Yeah, what's that? Another mukra gallon. Ah, it's enough. Eh? What is this thing? Every day you have an extra gallon, extra gallon. Why? They knew that they would lack oil. Lift up your voice and Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. Follow me now. I need your anointing. Come with your power. I love you. Holy Spirit. You captivate my soul. And every day I grow to love you. That's when I understood why the Bible says in Acts chapter 8 and the spirit of the Lord carried Philip from Samaria through Azotus to meet the Ethiopian Enoch. Say, Kalosa. Zipedo Katebe Every day I grow to love you more. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hands. Drawing me closer to you. I feel your power renewed. Nothing compares to this place. Where I may see you face to face. I can't miss my time. Oh. I cannot miss my flower season. You are being asked to carry extra weight, daughter of Zion, because you will need extra oil. Where you are going, you need extra oil. So you can others are carrying one gallon, you are carrying five gallons. They don't understand. The journey is long. Some doors have been closed by God Himself. Because you didn't deliver. You were called. Come and give a song. Say today I'm not in the mood to sing. That's the day you close that door. That's the day that door was closed. You now give me understanding of the times. So that I will know what to do. I will know what to do. Mami Neri Socha Efi Risa Uyoja Mami Pim Sensu 
Amen. Go for the message and take the next prayer topic. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Wisdom is the rightful application of information. James 1, 5 to 6. Wisdom is the... You can have information, but how to apply it determines whether you are a fool or you are wise. Wisdom is the rightful application of what? I can't hear you. Is the rightful application of what? So every information in your head doesn't mean you are wise. The wise is knowing what to do. Control us, delete is for what? On the computer. Are you okay? What about you? Control alt delete. Eh? Erase. Oh God. What about you? Hey, what about you? To delete. No. Eh? IT man. Control alt delete. Eh? Reboot. Correct. So you see somebody. Computer, the computer is rebooted. Hey, if I walk off a mouse, with a call to restart, we shut down. Not the crack, crack, crack. The person has information and knows how to apply it. How do you copy and paste? Now you have a mouse. No, no, I copy. Someone says, "Quack, quack." Hey, what are you doing? James chapter 1. So most of what I realize for most believers is that we come to church, we have the information but we don't know how to apply it. When to apply it? And we apply the right principle to the wrong pattern. So it looks like the thing is not working. Two people brought their children to um, Solomon. Two prostitutes. They slept with the same man. Gave birth the same day. One slept on his child. Woke up and swapped. Solomon sees this case. He said, divide the child into two. One is saying, do it! One said, please let the child live. Solomon said, give the one who wants the child to live. No mother will want the child dead. That is Wisdom. The rightful application of information. So James chapter 1, this is the third time I'm saying it that they've not put it on the screen. 5 to 6. Okay. If any of you lacks wisdom, Solomon had wisdom because he asked God for it. Let him ask of God who gives it to all, to how many people? Freely, liberally, and without reproach, and it to be given to him. The next verse. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. So give me verse 5 and 6 in NLT. We are going to ask for wisdom. We are going to ask for what? Because preach need their bridge. Man, you you have message, but you are not applying it because you foolish virgins. Let's read. Quarry says one, two, go. If you need, how many of you need wisdom? Good. Let's go. We'll go again. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for action. But when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver 
for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. So, wait, Jimmy, forgive me. Do you bind the spirit of Jimmy or you ask God for wisdom? Every spirit of Kwasiasem, every spirit of Kwasiasem disappear in any way. Ask God for wisdom. And the Bible says he gives you free how to apply what? Say Holy Spirit I need wisdom. Say Holy Spirit. So we say this and they begin to speak in tongues. Then you pray Lord wisdom for my home. Wisdom for my business. Wisdom for my life. Wisdom for this, then you are speaking. So, as you are speaking, he will be showing you some of the foolish decisions you've made that you need to correct it. Then you are writing it down. He will be showing you how foolish you have been in life. I've cut money and I've gone to God. God, what do I need to do? Give me wisdom. And he showed me this is how you do investment. This is how you do investment. People bring me businesses and I say, I'm not interested. Because when I talk to God, God tells me this is foolishness. Lift up your voice and ask God for wisdom. Hey, Ask God, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Isana me ya mawo. Me ya bofra. Me ya bofra. Nasu isra yo mankes. Mimpe bibi yara. Mimpe bibi yara. Onyansa ne hiyami. Me abo fura, me abo fura, Israel yo mankesi, Israel yo mankesi, mimpe bibi yara, yansane hiyami, yansane hiyami, yansane hiyami, yansane hiyami, yansane hiyami, yansane God can give you a wife. Foolishness, you will lose the wife. Give you a husband. Foolishness to me will give you capital. Foolishness, you will lose it. Foolishness, foolishness has made many lose opportunities. We call the other people foolish virgins. They did not know how to. They knew they have to buy extra oil. They didn't have it. They bought it late. In Jesus' name, Amen. How many points have I given? Four. Okay, I'll give you the last one for today. <coughs> I said ten, but you put it in come early. So maybe next time I'll give you the next five. I call this prayer is my favorite and I love it. Where is your God? I can give you so many people who got testimonies in rich because people ask them, Are you so foolish that you are serving God? Where is your God? And if you are a Christian and somebody has not questioned you on where is your God, then you are not a true Christian. And if they question you on where is your God and you didn't take it to prayer, we are foolish. Because that thing is something that God allows people to say to you to provoke the anointing in you to be stirred, for God to show them that is God. God likes to do show off. In Psalm 42, we read it a lot. As the dear panthers for the water so my soul. Can we go there? As the dear pants for waters, so panted my soul after the old God. This is somebody who is seeking God. Verse 2. My soul thirsts for God, for my for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Just say, the bear he wants to come before God. When shall I? He's always like, oh, today, so we do our service today. Oh, oh, so next service is well. Oh, he, he's always wanting to appear before God. But look at verse 3. My tears have been my meat. 
This is somebody who is seeking God. Day and night, what they control say unto me, where is your God? Give me the NKG. They ask of you. I seek the Lord. I seek the Lord. I'm always praying. I'm always talking to God. But they ask him, where is your God? Verse 4. When I remember these things, what does he do? I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Let me call feast of miracle. Let me call can God. Verse 5. Why are you cast down? When somebody asks you, Where is your God? When somebody, why are you cast down, oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me, hoping God? For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. God helps you by showing from his face. Let's go on. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan, from the height of Hermon, from the hill Mizar. I'll go deep into it later. Hello? How many of you have been asked this question for? Where is your God? How many of you have been asked? Oh, they've not asked you before. That's how many of you have been asked? Let me see your hands. You missed it. You turned around and you saw you, so you don't want to lift your hand. Let's look at another scripture, then I'll teach you. Micah chapter 7, verse 10. This will be our last one for today. Don't worry. I'll do close. Micah is in the Bible. I know you don't read Micah. It's not Michael. Then she who is my enemy will see. And shame will cover her. Who said to me, where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her. Now she will be trampled down like mad in the streets. This person was asked, where is your God? Now I'll give you two more scriptures that we can make business. Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach said, The king, the book, and Nezah, the king said, Bow down and worship this idol. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said they will not do it. And look at the question. Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. The book and Nezah asked, if that question, if you've never faced it before, go and read my book, can you stand? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lay, symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I made a God, but if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who, who will deliver you from my hands? This guy was yoping. I can sack you. And let's see what your God will do. Years ago, I always used Pastor Victor as an example. He had a boss who was telling him that. Please take care. And we go and beg him. He took care of the man till he died. your God. So look at the answer in the book at M. That M. Shadrach, Meshach, and I gave in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. You see, when people ask you where is your God, you don't need to answer them. God must give you result and the result is an answer. I remember years ago, I always say this. I'm sure you've heard it before. Auntie Rose's story. Old oh, church members met and said, Oh, that's a God bridge. Hey, don't worry. And she came to tell me. I looked at her and I got angry. Within one year, she was pregnant. Max did the same thing. Hey, wait, Chimmy, Papa. Maybe I'm not with them, Papa. And a daddy, and a daddy, and a daddy for Abraham. And they insulted them. They came to tell me. 
and look at the woman and said, your season has passed, but your daughter's season has not passed. Whatever is on you, I transfer to your daughter. Let your daughter make it on your behalf. We have no answer to you in this matter. The next verse, 17. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy finance. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. The next one. In case, but if not, let me know to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. You all know that story. They put these three people in the fire. Two of us. And when the people were in, Jesus appeared in the fire. And the fire became air conditioned. The book Nature was looking and told his people that, wait, how many people did we put in? He said, three. He said, I see four people. He said, the fourth man looks like the son of God. It's only, he, he, he said, who is that God? He saw the God. He said, read on. He said, he looked, the king looked into the fire. He said, there's a fourth man. And that fourth man, he looks like the son of God. God didn't come. He brought his son. Read. Look, he answered. I see four men loose. <laughs> this, I see four men. I see four men what? Because the ropes that they used in tying them, God broke him. God turned and the human beings were standing in the fire. Walking in the midst of the fire. And they were not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. And he said, hey, Shadrach, Meshach, Mumbi, come out. The guys came out, not even their hair, their clothes was hurt. Then told the people who said they were bad, put them in. They didn't last. As we have been going in, they were baked already. But let me end with this. David said in Psalm 3, For I call unto the Lord, and he heard my voice. Change the key for me. Lord! Let's feed go. How they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many of them that say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O oh Lord, he wasn't talking to the devil. That was the prayer David prayed. Oh Lord, I shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head. Oh Lord, I shield for me my glory and the lifter. Of my head. You know what it means? The lift of my head. When they say that God said, David saying that you are the one that I walk by my enemies and I lift up my head. Listen, you walk by your enemies and God makes you lift your head. When you are passing with your car, you don't know. It's draw draw that you have to touch. But when you are in your car, you are looking to see who is seeing you. That is why it is tinted. But you are roll your glasses that it is raining. But you want everybody to see you. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. That's why, I te- that's why I teach that when you get into this thing, you go to the mountain. You go to the holy hill. You spend time alone with God. God, they say, where are you in my life? Me, I know I serve you. And God must prove it. I lay me down. I lay me down and slept and awake. For the Lord sustained. He sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 people that have set themselves against me run about. Go on. Arise, oh Lord. 
save me oh my god for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone and has broken the teeth of the ungodly he was not talking to the devil he was talking to the God who can defend him. Salvation belongs unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Are you ready for this prayer? This is our last one for today. Five is okay for today. I know you are sleeping. You can share baby now. Who are you? Yes, who are you? Nonsense. If you have a euphobia, what the witches don't want me to do, well, that is making my enemies laugh at me. No. This case, as long as, listen, the Bible said, let God arise and let who? His enemies. As soon as they ask you, where is your God? From that day, they become God's enemy. And God can never fight for you until the people have become his enemy. Then the battle becomes personal. Did you hear that? Did you, did you understand? Let me give you an example. I was teaching this to somebody today. If I send Kobe, the Kobe, go to Gawi and open a branch, God forbid, if anything bad happens, you are responsible. But if I hear that you were doing work at Kaneshi, it's not my fault. You went in your own power. I hope you understand me. So when you are doing something for God and people take it personally to hate you and fight you, you don't move. You say, God, I'm doing it for you. And when you do that, then the person becomes God's personal enemy. And see how God will lift you up. Well, we know here when they came to tell Ruka yeah, that you should stop living, stay in the office and working. He doesn't go anywhere. How will she get married? And I'm hearing that some of you even miss that prophetess who has left the church. Some of you are her friends. I don't have a problem. But when trouble comes, don't look for me. They prophesy with what they see on earth. And that she should stop working and go out. When I'm telling her, don't go anywhere. So go. Well, this lady listened to. She got so frustrated that her mother came to ask me questions. And Pastor, are you sure God will do it? Take your seat. But she got married. She had a child. She's blessed. She's living her home. And that same person is still single. somebody asks you that God has disappointed you it's a nice prayer topic start laughing and go to Psalm 3 God will lift up your head I said God will do what I didn't hear God will do what I didn't hear God will do what God will do what I didn't hear God will do what I'm sorry I didn't come to you with this thing but my service to you people are just fighting me I cried unto the Lord in my The Lord sustained, He sustained me. I lay me down, slept and I wait for the Lord sustained, He sustained me. Thou, oh Lord, I have shield for me. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. 
blasting their tongues, blasted, 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 blasted. This is the last one we are doing and we live here. Blasted. Are you serving a God who heals? Why are you sick? Why are you sick? Why are you always sick? You say you serve a God who heals. Then you start healing people. You get healed and now you are the one who is healing people. The one who is praying for the sick. You say, hey! Look at you. You say you go to church. You are always asking, can I have transport? Hey. When they say you can't do it. When they say it's not possible. You say with God with God with this my God then he said by my God I live over walls by my God from 18 I walk through truth a ball of steel is broken by my hands Amen. he came through for many they tried it with Daniel. They put Daniel in the lion's den. And when the king came, the king said, Daniel, has the God whom you trust continually, has the God whom you serve continually been able to serve you? Oh, keep me forever. They meant it for evil. God has a way of fighting you. Turn the battle to him. Don't blame the witch or the wizard. And feel too honored and glorified. Don't make them feel glorified. They are watching the matches through. No, 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 I want to hear you pray. We have five more minutes to live here. Blast it. I want to hear you. If you say you work for the Lord, look at your life. The only testimony God can give you is he will prepare a devil before you in the presence of those enemies. That's why he gives you twins. That he, when he makes your wedding something to behold, they won't get the one to come and they will hear it in the news. Why is God making it so big and grand so that those who will not be here and see it will see it and see it by force? Because they ask you a question Where is your God? Psalm 35 says, I will contend with them that contend with you, and I will vindicate you, says the Lord. Give me some 35. He will contend with them that contend with you. The same Psalm 23 said, For his name's sake, for his name's sake, yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For his name's sake. The enemy wants you to move away from his name so that God will still not do it. Why have you stopped doing what you are doing for God? Why are you no more committed? Because they are laughing at me. So that God cannot continue to do it, right? Then they win. For his name's sake. Oh, 
Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. You need this prayer. sake he will lead you in a path of righteousness for his name's sake treasures of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful Redeemer of my past and present wrongs And holder of my future days to come Let's start from the beginning Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth Let's be on our feet Much less love and beauty Let's well. Let the world know nothing in this world will satisfy. And Jesus, you are the cup that won't run dry. Let's start again. Who is like you all over the earth? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world will satisfy. They can't stop us. Jesus, you are the cup that won't run dry. Give me verse 2. Treasures of my heart and of my soul. Merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrongs. He's a holder, the holder of my future days to come. Your presence is heaven. Your presence is heaven to me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All my days on earth I will await ha. That moment that I see you face to face Nothing in this world can satisfy Cause Jesus you are the cup that won't run Can we just say, read this one again from the beginning? All my days on earth I will await. All the days on earth I will await. The moment that I see you face to face. Nothing in this world can satisfy. 
Jesus, you are the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence. Whatever I will do to stay in your presence, they can't take me away from there. That is a place nobody can take me from. You <laughs> If you are sick, tell him you, you demand your healing. Ask him for healing. I demand healing in the auditorium. Is healing. To me. Every sickness is rebuked. Every virus is rebuked. Every bacteria is rebuked. In the name of Jesus. Now, now listen. Spend about 25 30 seconds binding the demons that trouble you. That's the last thing you do. You bind them, go. This one, go. Poverty, go. At long, you've, you've had an encounter with God. So now you are using your power to work. So now command things sickness, get out of my life. Disgrace, get out of my life. Shame, get out of my life. Poverty, get out of my life. Disappointment, get out of my life. You have no portion with me. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus whose I am and whom I serve, you can have no mandate over me. You can have no power over me. You have no jurisprudence or jurisdiction over any church member. We are no, not attacked. We are not in trouble. The enemy cannot have his life free will return. We command every health issue to be healed. We command the spirit of death to be arrested. We command the spirit of death to be arrested. We command the spirit of death to be arrested. We command death out of our jurisdiction. We command sickness out of our place. Now in the name of Jesus, we soar higher. We reign higher. We take charge. We are out of the iron gates. We are out. We have been liberated. We have been redeemed. We have been made whole. We are prosperous. We are succeeding. The power of the enemy is broken complete from us we are the heritage of the lord we are the heritage of the lord we are the sons and daughters of god we have the image we have his likeness we insist in him that we live it is in him that we move it is in him that we have our being our projects will finish we will finish our building our homes will be successful our life will be successful we will have testimonies we will have various testimonies this week, we will have a lot of testimonies. This week, the heavens are open. This week, the doors are open. Nothing can stop this blessing. Nothing can stop us from entering into opportunity. We have become wise. We have become wise. We have received wisdom. We have understanding of the times. We know what we need to do. We know where we need to go. We are no more lazy. We are now walking in the will of God. We thank you, Jesus, that our enemies are now your enemy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap offering here.